And uh, if you notice, we're starting to get pedestrians back like it never even happened. Oh, I might have a shot to get on the barge. Hold on a second, guys. Wait, this is, this might be our moment. All right, all right, let's go, let's go. Let's see if we can do this. All right, let's see. I don't know, guys, I ain't promised anything, but this is our shot. Hey, whatever, the worst thing that can happen, I fall in the water. <laughs> Hey, oh, listen, I can swim, that's good. Um, hold on, guys, this is... What's going on? Alfred, nice to meet you, man. Casey, nice to meet you, Paul. All right, guys, this is... Something's happened. I don't know what's happening. But Matt, Matt, Matt made a phone call. It's lunchtime, guys. It is lunchtime. Wow, this is wild. This is absolutely wild. All right, I can't believe I'm on this barge. We're spotted down. Here's the crane operator. And we'll ask him a couple questions now while we're here. How wild is this? No joke, I, I'd rather, um, I'd rather jump into the water next time. <laughs> hey, what do you mean, man? You're good. <laughs> All right, so we have our our tug captain here. Our S, what do you? I mean, our crane captain. Or what, what would you be called, right? At this point, crane operator. the crane operator. Um. So I went to the show. I'm actually recording, so you know. I went to the show and I saw everybody from B&M and I talked to Matt. Yeah. It's like, what's it gonna take for me to get on there? It's like, you gotta call the M and B&M. Yeah. And I go, where's the M? Because yeah. you're talking to him. <laughs> and they just gave me a hard time the whole time while I was there. Yeah. I was in their booth there having a good time talking and stuff like that. Cool, I mean, just to see the amount of work that you guys do. A lot of people don't understand how much it takes to make these shows happen. Yeah. You guys have been here since the morning, from the beginning to now at the end. Because I, 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 told, I told Matt yesterday on text, I go, hey, um, can I go Tuesday? He's like, dude, we're done Sunday, if that. Yeah. So, um, and, and for my Tug series of viewers, they're going to love this. Okay. I've, been, I've been getting some cool footage. I saw Casey flying the other day. You're like, Are you, this is like Cirque du Soleil yeah. <laughs> uh, on the water. I mean, I saw him literally hunking up to the top. I, I'm seeing you guys pull up the spuds and stuff like that. So, so you can move this how far along? Oh, all the way on the mats. All the way here, because right now yeah. we're, we're, we're literally on some wood, right? That's, that's what's on there. And what do you call that? The mat? Yeah. The mats. So you just go up and down. It doesn't matter. Does that affect you when you're driving? Uh, not really. No. Not now. If, it, if it's rough, because look, the first couple of days, it was, it was, the current was ripping here, dude. I didn't, I realized there was so much current well, in here. You got a good crew, Casey and uh, Rome, they kind of, they're my eyes if I can't see anything. And Willis, he'll direct me as well. If he can't see nine, he'll give me a little signal where he wants me to be. And then that kind of like, kind of aims me where, really, really well where I want to go. Are you guys all, all communicating on the radio all the time? No. No. Hand, 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 hand signals. <laughs> Okay, guys, we're gonna go ahead and have this. I'm, you don't, have, you don't know how excited I am for this. This is like a kid in a candy store. Cause I look, you see, I've done the videos of the yachts in in the New River. How they, you know, they don't want to scratch a yacht. Here it's like, 
let's work. Yeah. Doesn't matter if something falls here, let's work, let's yeah. do some stuff. Uh, and, and to be able to show that, and the fact that I have all this cool footage of you guys working from back there, now I'm gonna get some stuff from in here yeah. to show. That's gonna be th cool. Yeah, of course. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna see little kids say in the future, man, I wanna be a crane operator on a tug. <laughs> Wait for it. All right, this is sketchy moment part two. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> guys, guys, hey, it's not get, it's not easy to get on the B&M. Um, I was just talking about that with the guys. Uh, we think it's normal, and if it's just like everyday thing, and we're just like, come on, guys, do it. To a regular person, they're like, yeah. <laughs> listen, listen, guys, listen. Jump this. <laughs> Hey, I like the fact that you guys got a barbecue here. Yeah. I like that. You need to use it? Okay, so so what's this here? The ladder. No, no, I, no, not the ladder. Th this is one of your generators? Oh, that's power unit. Okay, so. That so it runs the hammer. Okay, so can we talk about that while we're here? Stop yeah, for sure. a second, come here. Let, let's, let's talk about this because this is, this is super interesting. When I saw you guys. It's called a vibratory hammer. This is the power unit. This is the engine for that. It runs the pumps, the hydraulic pumps. It sends hydraulic to that to make that shake. Okay, so, and I'm talking to them so they can hear as well. You can, you can get into the, to the screen. Okay, so I saw that on some of the beams, uh, on the pilings, you have like a cutout. It, pipes. It, uh, pipes. On the pipes. So, so what's that cu cut out for? For this to be able to, to get into there? Yeah, well, uh, sometimes the hammer, depending on the hammer, don't fit. Okay. So they put cutouts in them, so just so the hammers could just sit right inside and grab better. How much does this thing weigh? Uh, a lot, right? Like 5,000. 5, 5,000 pounds. Yeah. And it's all hydraulically driven through this. This. Yeah. <laughs> this is crazy. Okay, so I also saw that you had had another tool that it was just banging on uh, for yes. for I think for the wood. Yeah, that was a, that's our uh, hammer. That leads. It's a gravity hammer. Okay, so it's a gravity hammer. He, he's just picking it up on yeah. the crane. Okay. So is this one of your bigger tugs, smaller tugs? What's this? this? The, uh, we have longer tug. This is the biggest as far as height. Okay. Width. So the biggest as far as height and width. Yeah. So is, is height important here? Uh, this is just something they got a deal on, really. So okay. it, it, it's just the big barge that we use. And it's been working out fine. Okay, you got your, 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 your spuds. spuds? Yeah. That's like our brakes. That's your brakes, guys. So you guys know a lot of people ask, and I, I tell them it's kind of like an anchor, right? It's, it's basically. Yeah, it's, so you have both spuds down right now? Yes. Okay. So the only way you can get those sp spuds up and down is through the crane? Yes, sir. That's it? That's it. Guys. There are some barges that have a motor in the back that has a cable ran through the bottom of the spuds that okay. lifts it without the crane. We have one of those barges. That's barge five. That, that, so you just press a button and it'll automatically go up? You put a lever or whatever. Without, without this crane? Without the crane and then the lift. But that's, that's not here. So. Is that convenient for you guys? Like when you work a truck, uh, a barge like that? Depends. Depends on the situation. If we do so much different type of work, it could go either way. Because you can tell him quick, drop. Yeah. And automatically he'll, yeah. he's, he's going to save you in the sense yeah. that you, you feel yeah. The current or something's not a problem, you can't as control far it. As me driving the thing, I, it's just the timing thing. I gotta just know that danger's coming. Yeah. And, and just don't freaking full throttle it, knowing I gotta wait for the spud to come down. Yeah. You know, it's gonna take time, so I'll go nice and easy, drop the spud softly. Back full and throttle on my ch channel is called Whiskey Throttle. Yeah, Whiskey, there you go. <laughs> whiskey Throttle, guys. Black smoke. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna get up there, guys. Okay, so we have Casey. Hey, introduce the crew. Yeah. Casey, the other. Uh, Rome. R Rome? Yeah, and Willis. And Willis. And yourself? Steve. Steve. All right, guys, we're going to get on the BM. Let's go. This is wild. Oh, shoot. We forgot the camera again, Steve. Damn it. What, what are you saying, John? Are you up at the show site? I got the best view in the house. I, I would believe that, but are you at the show site? Yeah. Okay, I just got here, where are you? 
I don't think you can get to where I'm at, John. Okay. <laughs> I'm on the tug. Oh, good. Wait I'm for it. Oh, uh, oh, I see this. Oh, yeah, I see it. Where? <laughs> where are you? The tug is pulling the Intrepid. All right, I'll see you up there. All right, guys. He's coming too? Nah, I doubt it. I... All right, so I, I already feel the the movement in the barge. Okay, and 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 the wood area that the crane is on, and you all you guys call that a mat, right? All right, guys. I'll tell you, watching, watching, uh, watching those guys move around and jump off and on the docks, it's pretty, it's pretty crazy when you really think about it. Okay, how many beams in total, Steve, would you say you guys have to pull uh, during this show? Like, for instance, this show, do you guys have a, a certain amount that they tell you, hey, look, there's 80 beams, 100 beams? No, uh, they, they, they just take them. Uh, my, uh, Nick, uh -huh. they put out a phone. I saw I saw the barge over there where you guys are, are putting all the, the beams. Yeah. It's full. How many do you pull? Because I had that question the other day when I was asking. How before you guys start going, like oh, how many can you put on here? Like five, four? Uh, we don't count them. Maybe it's been about 30, but uh, you see the counterweight? Yeah. I kind of give the space about like two inches from the counterweight. If he swings around, you can fill him up that high. Ex counter. Explain the counterweight so they uh, know. The counterweight is the back of the crane there. The two weights, that's what, uh, so that way we're able to lift things with the crane. Without that, the crane will fall forward. We don't want that to happen. No. <laughs> no. So, okay, explain some of the signals. Once, once they tell you, you know, hey, we got what we need up, then you start the barge and get going. What what's what are you looking for signal wise? He's telling him now he's got to tell him when he puts the hammer on top of the beam, that means close the jaws. So gotta grab the beam. And then when he grabs the beam, he'll look at Rome. That Rome will give the head knock that he's grabbing the beam. Okay. And then Casey will let Rome know when to shake it. It's either the head tap or a Why do they put it next to the barge? So that way we could uh, lay it down, because you can't lay down. You can, but it could damage the hammer. You can't lay down the beam with the hammer. The oh. holes are in the way, everything, so it's just so, so that's where I saw that Casey was up in the air, hooking something to it. Yeah, he'll hook the shackles up to it. If it's, there's no holes to attach, the arms reach. Yeah. Well, so swing them around.
definitely got a good view over here of what, what's going on. Yeah. So the whole time you're, you're watching exactly everything that's going on. If you have to make some quick adjustments, you can. Yeah, adjustments, phone calls, whatever. So, so who, who's the person? Are you because you're the tug captain giving more, uh, more or less the, the hey, it's okay to get going, or, or, or are they giving you the go ahead? Hey, we're ready to go. Uh, we kind of work in sync. Once they lay down the beans, I'm ready to go. I turn on the phone. They already know. Okay. What do you call the front uh, spud? Is there a particular name that you you give it here? Just say front spud. Front spud, back spud. Okay, front and back. Yeah. Wherever the boat is, uh, captain's perspective. That's, that's really much what the spud is. Okay. Uh, nice and simple that way. No complicated names or anything. Guys. This is going to be super cool. Now, what's powering this tug? What, what do you guys got powering this tug? There's two, uh, two Cummings motors. Cummings. I saw because, let me tell you, so there was some current when I saw you pushing yeah. against current and wind, What like the very first days of setup. That must get kind of wild. Yeah, it gets tough. It's sometimes it's stressful. Uh, there are times when I uh, just have one motor. so wild dude and obviously there's a lot of trust amongst you guys right everybody trusts everybody yeah. to to make sure nobody's making a mistake because those mistakes could be a problem yeah a big so problem from here it's good for me so if they don't see something and let's say Willis is in a blind area or he's back there he's stuck or maybe he's trip and his foot got stuck somewhere. Let's say by the counterway and Willis is swinging, doesn't see him, I could pop the horn and let him know stop for a second. Yeah. Help you guys out. So that that'll we be your warning. For each other. Yeah that'll that'll be your warning. Hey you're there's danger there you don't see it. Yeah. You don't watch this. Yeah. Alright well they we're gonna help go me as well if I can't see because as you can see the crane dead center. I can't see it. Back. I, I tell you, like you, you're literally a foot off of the wall, the sea wall. Yeah. Uh, that's why I was like, I gotta get on board. This is my, this is my shot. Uh, okay. <laughs> it was my shot. I was like, hey, uh, six five two twenty five ripped of me is gonna get on here, guys. This is wild to say the least. Okay, is there any any of the pilings that are a lot more difficult to put in or remove? Like, obviously it seems like it's easier to put them, take them, remove them as, as far as putting them in, right? Um, uh, I wouldn't say hard once you get what you need to do now. It's, you know, really ground conditions make it hard. Mm -hmm. Um, depending, that's pretty much the, the worst part is ground conditions, 
This is just this is just sandy bottom, right? Where we're at? It's a little bit of this rock. It depends where you're at. It's a little bit of mix. There's some sandy, there's some rock, there's some muck. Okay. So you can't really tell what you get over here. We just did one right there and then we hit rock. Uh, I think that center center beam right there, the gray one. Yeah. That was, that was hard driving there. So is there is how deep do you have to get those beams in? Uh, we like to because they're holding depending what they're holding, but hmm. we like to get a good 10, 10, 15 feet in the ground. So so at that point you guys feel comfortable. Yeah, we feel comfortable, it's good strong. All right guys, we got a spud going on, so we got the signal. We're, we're going on. couple of days they were hiding their face now they're gonna be like let's go <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and uh I'm gonna go ahead and get this uh thing stopped real quick because I literally I'm filming the inside of the barge with a phone. Wait for it. Wow, this is insane. skill.
So just like that, you guys got five uh, out. Or four of them, right? Uh, four going on five. Do you guys have to put anything on those beams as far as lights and stuff like that? If they are in the channel, most of the channel, yeah, we'll put lights on. So I saw that there's a bunch of lights on the actual bar. That's why I'm asking that question. So, so somebody won't be surprised and, you know, yeah, wake yeah. up and, and, and hit a beam. Yeah. Uh, well, the motors drink at night, so <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll run into those beams for sure. So, so Casey is family with Matt. See what? Moving. Okay. So Matt is his dad. Yes, sir. So I met Matt. I met a bunch of the guys over there. Um, a bunch of characters. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. You can tell they're a lot of fun when they're not working. Yeah. <laughs> when when everybody's working, it's game time. Yeah. Looks like the spot is gonna go. Day. Are you at the whim of the tides, or how's it? Go? How's that work? Uh, uh, the way we judge it, we'll probably this day's been around four o'clock. Around four o'clock, you guys. Yeah, about pretty much around four. We're usually pretty uh, judged by what's on land, but it's booming us down right now. So if yeah. Not, when he stops working, we stop working. Well, yeah, inform them. 
But yeah, that, that's what it used to be called. Yeah. Okay. So, 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 so John, John will call you and tell you, hey. Yeah. Or he'll contact me and get the phone. Yeah. Super interesting how all this happens, guys. Highly specialized. I, I, I say yes. Uh, I think it's very, very specialized. I don't give credit where credit is due. A lot of people they just see construction bars and it's like keep it moving, you know. Yeah. But, uh, these, a lot of these, when you see these barges, you got to give that respect because they built all the sea walls. The and sea walls. Your beautiful view. Your backyard. Your you know, everything you have in the backyard due to these guys that are on these barges, you know? That's crazy when you really think about it. So you guys primarily do a lot of seawalls, right? We do seawalls, we do finger piers, docks that hold holds the bolts uh, to their piers. Yeah. You know, everything. We do repairs. You know, we say keep so countless people seawalls, you know? Yeah. So you have smaller smaller barges for that stuff too, right? Yes. To get it to tight. I think Matt was telling me you guys got a barge that you can't even you can't even get out of the ICW. Yes. Uh, that's barge five. It's so long. He's at least 140 feet long. And what do you guys that's use what that I for? I told you. Uh, that usually does for sea walls. Uh, a lot of big jobs. Sea walls, sheep walls. Uh, marinas, docks. Yeah. Uh, anything in that order. Dredging. Yeah. You're dredging with that as well. I mean, there's nothing you don't do pretty much. Are you primarily working in Broward uh, as opposed to Miami Dade County? Um, or everywhere? We're pretty much everywhere. We go from West Palm Beach all the way down. As far as uh, Vizcaya. Wow. Uh, Vizcaya is uh, Miami. in Miami, guys. And it's a beautiful house that's owned by Miami Dade County. Has a lot of history. I would, I would encourage you guys to go and check it out if you, if you come to the South Florida area. It's beautiful. That whole area is really nice. All right, that's it. This whole, this whole section is done. Just like that, boom. Mowing them up, guys. And and you have the police officer there just right next to you guys the whole time. Yeah, and just you know, keep an eye out for the lake if anybody's speeding too fast. Yeah, and he'll, shout, he'll, he'll basically shadow you guys. No, and he runs up to them, the boaters, and uh, turns on the siren, boop, boop. Stops it. Uh, we can't do nothing. What we gotta do? Yeah, put up a middle finger. Asshole. Yeah, people. <laughs> yeah, it's That's crazy. All he really could do. Yeah. I wanna get the outside ones. You got a nice view up there. Uh, yeah. better, better than me. <laughs> All right. That is the view, guys. That is the view. All right. Casey's here.
one down, another 50 to go. Here, here so you guys can see a close-up of the hammer. And then what they were saying as far as the mat, This is wild. Spuds down, it's actually coming up. And there's Steve, adjusting, moving. Now look at here, look at uh, how close he is to these beams, right? connected it's pretty wild dude this is a wild video guys I hope you guys are smashing that like button Yours truly, Alfred Montaner, making it happen. Uh, big shout out to everyone in Informa and B&M for, uh, I don't know, this is this series has just been a joy to do. All right, there's a couple more there. And you see all those beams slowly are out of here, guys. Pretty wild building. Like he's gonna drop the spot now. Look at look at how there's a little inflatable in the way. If you guys look at a video that I did with a buddy of mine's from the food boat, Derek, uh, I was on a video with him on day 29 of his live stream, and we had one of these spuds give us a problem, and it was crazy. 
obviously this is a whole different system, but he had a winch system. Look how it's just hooking up. You see how it's vibrating it off? Yeah, um, it's pretty cool how to see all this work. Listen up, I'm gonna get back, get out of these uh, out of the way, but I do wanna show you guys. Look at all these unbelievable yachts. Look what we're seeing, and uh, look what these people are doing on a weekend, right? Somebody's gotta get dirty, and today it's us. Palm Beach, guys, Alfred Montaner. Wait for it. Wow. Well guys, we're done. So, listen, I want to thank you for, for being so such a gracious host, Steve. Uh, um, guys, I'm going to be getting off here. I'm going to get on and I'm going to show them. They're going to, you're going to unload the beams now, right? Because you're full. Yeah. All right, guys. So, this is my exit. How wild was this video? Guys, you better smash that like for Steve and this crew. They're, they're taking 10 minutes of their time so I can get off of this barge. And we're right there. We're oh, right there. You jumping five feet. I'm, I'm going to get you yeah. touched up. Uh, I'm good. Uh, yeah. Guys, I'm out of here. Albert Montaner is getting on land again. Let's go. I have to, I have to guys, I have to. Look at this VIP treatment, guys. Wow, dude, I feel I feel like a superstar. A superstar without a red carpet. That's what we're talking about. All right. Introduce you're Casey, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And Matt's your dad. Yes, sir. So I was I was hanging out with them at the show. And what was your name? Shorty. Shorty? That's not what they told me up there. Yeah. A lot of people call me Shorty. And Willis, right? Guys. You guys are amazing. Look how close you put me on there. I'll tell you right now, this actually did almost didn't happen. It was it was sheer coincidence that you guys. He said that one of you guys got hungry. It was you. That you just coincidentally said, "Hey, I'm gonna go stop real quick," and all of a sudden I'm on filming, and boom, let's go. Hey, I got some awesome footage of you guys. I'm gonna film you guys taking all these beams back over there because you guys are full already. So at least all the stuff that's unsafe for boaters is is out all the far end. And now all the stuff inside, you just start pick, picking it up, picking it up. Tomorrow, you guys will be done. Guys, hey, listen, thank you so much for uh, inviting me on the B&M. You guys are certified badasses. Let me tell you, I'm so impressed, and so is my audience, all the cool stuff you've done. Well, guys, does it get any better than that? Can I, can I ask for anything better than that? Guys, Big shout out to Informa and for B&M 
for being able to go ahead and let me get on the tug and show this amazing series here of the teardown and the setup of the Palm Beach Boat Show. Amazing, epic to say the least. Uh, big shout out to everybody who allowed me and trusted that I was gonna do a good job to, to make people realize what type of work and all the people involved that it takes to do something so big like this Palm Beach Boat Show. I'm honored to say the least. If you guys wanna see more content that's different and crazy, check out my playlist on my channel. Absolutely amazing. Thank you guys. I'm out of here. Alfred Mountain making a scene as always. Boom, 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 boom. Today's video was brought to you by Hook Optics. To get more information on Hook Sunglasses, go to hooksunglasses.com. Whiskey throttle hats and chit show gear are also available at luxuryribtenders.com. Don't forget to smash that like button on the way out.